In early 2018, the Schuylkill Mall in Frackville, Pennsylvania was closed for good. The locally acclaimed and popular mall that served middle class patrons for decades was gone. But why? Why did the Schuylkill Mall die out over time? That's what we're going to be looking at tonight on this week's episode of Nostalgia Malls. The Schuylkill Mall had its grand opening on October 9th of 1980. It was developed by Crown American, a development company based in Pennsylvania. When it first opened, the mall had around 800,000 square feet of space, making it huge, especially in Rust Belt, Pennsylvania. It had three anchor stores at the time of its opening, a Kmart, a Sears, and a Hess's department store. Hess's department stores was a chain located in Pennsylvania that went bankrupt in 1996. The mall originally had space for 115 individual stores, including a McCroy variety store. However, of the 115, 91 were open on opening day. This included a Weiss Market store, two McDonald's, one in the parking lot, and one Ray and Derrick store. The Sears replaced a nearby Sears that had been around since 1930, so that Sears closed and moved to the Schuylkill Mall. Which shows just how massive and popular this mall was. The new Sears was three times the original one's size. At that time, there was also a Regal Theater in the mall, which was pretty massive, but wouldn't see renovations until 2010. Hess's was trying to do something interesting in the mall. It was a store in a store concept. It sold all kinds of things, including furniture. It's an interesting idea, and I'm pretty sure I've seen it before on the channel in my Kmart video. It was a thing back then. And to see it used in this mall sort of shows the scale that this mall was popular around its opening time, because this was sort of a new, not very common idea. The Kmart there was also special compared to other ones as it had a home improvement section, which was not very common. They considered a JC Penny to be opened as a mall anchor, but it never went through. In 1983, Pomeroy's located from the old Sears location as well to the mall. It became the fourth anchor. And then a year later, Bonton bought Pomeroy's, so now it was a Bonton store. Throughout the 80s and the 90s, the mall was the hit of the area. It most definitely beat the other two smaller regional malls, as shown by the stores moving from there to the Schuylkill Mall. And I think one of the reasons it was successful in the first place was due to the fact that it appealed to its consumer base. It wasn't this fancy, upper-class mall we used to see back then. Rather, it was made for blue-collar, middle-class families in mind as that was the area was in. Frackville, Pennsylvania is in the Rust Belt, which is mainly construction, factories, manufacturing, that kind of thing. In 1991, a whopping fifth anchor was opened up, a Farmore, which was a popular pharmacy back in the 90s. Sears got larger renovations during 1995, however the mall would have issues with its renovations as time continued. As nice as things seemed, that same year problems began to surface as the Hesses closed down. And a new store wouldn't be reopened in the anchor space until 1998 when a US factory outlet took its place. An appliances store opened in 1998 called Rex TV and Appliance. However, a little after that, bigger problems kept coming. So now the Hesses was closed down, but now the US factory outlets closed and its location became the location of a Black Diamond antique store. These problems would continue of stores moving from place to place as the mall died out over time until 2018 when all the problems would manifest and it would shut down for good. The Schuylkill Mall is better than ever. No matter what you're shopping for, you'll be sure to find it. With over 90 plus stores, including Kmart, Hess's and Bonton, Farmore and more. Just a short drive for your one-stop shopping trip. It's better than ever at the Schuylkill Mall. The Schuylkill Mall, we're better than ever.
You have reached the nostalgia hotline. A representative will be with you shortly. We thank you for your patience. The period of time that spanned between 1998 and 2018 was really confusing for them all as stores began to just open and move to other stores' old locations. As stated earlier, just after an appliances store opened in 1998, a US factory outlet was then closed, became the location of a Black Diamond Antiques store. Bigger problems started to arise, and in 2007, the mall was sold to a company known as Empire Reality. The Hess's location became the location of a Steve and Barry's in 2007, however, that company would go out of business in 2009. In that same year, the mall Chick-fil-A also closed down. The old Stephen Barry's space was converted into a famous labels clothing store, however, that also closed two years later. In 2011, Dunham Sports signed a lease to open a mall store on the old Farmore site. The Black Diamond, which had opened there, then moved to the Hess's former place, and in 2012, the Dunham opened. However, that same year, as good as things might have been looking, one of the original stores to open in the mall, the Mall Gap, which was very popular amongst the mall's main demographic, also closed. One of the big reasons the mall died out over time, sort of its main issue, was its lack of attention. It had an old look, retro logo, poor brownish color palette, minimal renovations. In fact, the mall Sears, which opened with the mall's opening in 1980, was only renovated in 1995 and the cinema was only renovated in 2010. So there were big issues with the mall in terms of its appeal to its customers. Finally, things started to look really dreary for the mall. In mid-2016, the mall was put up for sheriff's sale. And then it was sold in 2017 to North Point Development Inc. for just a tenth of the price they were selling it at. In May 2017, the stores were given three months to evacuate the property. This was bad for the Schuylkill Mall. The only thing left by January 2018 was the theater, which was at one point a regal theater. However, in 2010 to 2013, as I said, it underwent major renovations after it was purchased and converted to a King Theater circuit. Finally, the end would be spelled for the Schuylkill Mall. In early 2018, it was closed for good, and demolishment began. That ended around September of that same year, and a Clayco warehouse was built in its place by the property owners North Point Development, Inc. The new front-wheel drive Hyundai Excel was designed by the same man who designed this Maserati. But they are a little different. The Excel has room for three more passengers. It's more economical, and it costs about $40,000 less. Of course, the Hyundai Excel doesn't go quite as fast as the Maserati, but in the long run, that may save you even more money. Hyundai. Cars that make sense. The Schuylkill Mall was an interesting story. It gained popularity for a number of years, however, as soon as the mid-90s rolled in, it just kind of died over time. There doesn't seem to be a defined reason. Add to it some of the mall's popular stores, like an Auntie Anne's Pretzels, never even left for the reason of sales. There also isn't any massive socioeconomic shift to blame either, like with most cases of a dying mall. My personal theory is simply that the mall lost its popularity over time. I think this makes sense, as the latter 2010s were an era that saw massive advances in social norms, including online shopping. Add to it, the mall was old, and clearly lacked updates and renovations. Finally, the area in which it sprung was not the most financially active region to begin with, which would make sense that the mall would just kind of lose its popularity. I think with all of these factors considered, it is still a tad bit confusing, but the malls dying out over the years makes somewhat more sense. 
It is still sad to see them all go, however, I think it's just a thing of fate.